I had just had enough. I was so tired. A nanny was raising my baby. I went home like six months before that and Marion wanted her, not me, to put her to bed. And I was like, I am not doing this. This is not this is not the person that I want to be. I don't like this. I don't love this. My heart isn't here. And so I just walked away. Welcome back, Crafted Entrepreneurs. In this episode, I'm joined by somebody who's been on the podcast before in a different way. And she then became my client. And so much has changed for her in such a short amount of time. I'm so excited to introduce you to a former lawyer turned coach and advocate for women in the legal profession. She is on a mission to help women combat overwhelm realign careers with their values and priorities and foster a sense of community among law-minded women. She organizes the life-changing Powerhouse Lawyers Retreat. It's a remarkable in-person event designed to bring law-minded women together, fostering connections and mutual support that transcend the bounds of the legal profession. Oh my goodness. So we are in for a treat with Erin Gurner. Yay. Thank you so much for having me, Kayla. I'm so honored to be here. This is a very full circle moment, I feel like. Okay, so last time you were on the podcast, let's go back there. Last time you were on the podcast, you were being coached. It was when I was doing live coaching sessions. And take us back to where you were in that moment. Why'd you come on? I remember getting on that podcast feeling like I knew that I was ready to go higher and do something else. I knew that I wanted to coach. I knew that I wanted to impact more women. And I just didn't know what that vehicle was going to be. But I knew something about being on your podcast was going to be a catalyst for helping me discover what that was. And so I didn't even have the business that I have now when I was on that podcast. I had wasn't even, you know, impacting attorneys at that time. And I just think about that woman who was like basically one foot in, one foot out. And now I look back and I am so proud of her for just keeping going and believing and trusting and never giving up, honestly, and knowing that I wanted to be in your sphere and learn from you. I put you on my vision board and I prayed for you about you and your community. And I was like, I am going to be a part of it because I know she's going to change my life. And you did. Oh my gosh. Well, you're going to make me cry. And it's the beginning of the episode. We can't do that at the beginning. I know, right? That same that before the end. But I am so proud of you. Like, honestly, you came on because you were really focused on your network marketing stuff at the time. And it's interesting because my last guest, we were talking about that transition, like where you go, okay, I like network marketing. I love it. It's changed my life, but there's more, like there's more for me. And you were really, I don't think you were willing to see it in that moment that that wasn't like the path you were actually supposed to be focused on. So take me there because I know that there might be somebody listening in right now that was in your shoes back then, right? That's going like, I'm doing something right now that's good. It's good, but I know that there's something different for me. What would you say to them? I would say pay attention to the pebbles along the way. I listened to a fantastic woman speak this past weekend and she gave this exact talk to just pay attention to the pebbles in your life before a boulder comes out and hits you. And that was very much what was happening with that experience. It was the pebbles of God nudging me and my intuition nudging me of like, this doesn't feel completely aligned. It served me for a time. But I think when something has served you successfully for a time and you have achieved at a high level doing that, it's hard to then get uncomfortable again to rise further and to go higher. So yeah, I think that's really what that that transition was all about is just believing and knowing one step at a time. And I just knew that there was something else. And mine actually ended up being a boulder because I wasn't really paying attention along the way. And something just came out of nowhere and like knocked me, not even with the network marketing company, but just with the current coach that I had at that time. And I was like, you know what? No. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I know where God has called me to be. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not messing around. My time is now. There are women that I need to impact. And by me having one foot 
in and out, I'm not serving the women that I'm meant to be serving. Mm, That's so good. I think a lot of people get stuck in that one foot in, one foot out. They haven't decided to go all in because the uncertainty on the other side with both feet in, like you are jumping into the deep end and you don't know how cold it's going to (laughs) be. Right. Because with the network marketing company, you've still got that kind of like life preserver, Mm -hmm. right? Of being under a company who's, you know, doing the things while you're quote unquote, you have your own business. There's still a lot of foundational things that are being taken care of in the background that when you really fully step out on your own and decide to build your own brand, it's really truly a leap of faith and just believing and knowing and just having the courage to keep going, even though it's hard and it's not cute or pretty, but if you keep going, it's going to turn out amazing. Yes, and you're thriving now. Like I love looking at you cuz it's just like you're happy. Like I could tell you're just like you're in your moment to shine, you know? And like even though you don't have it all figured out yet, it's just like you're like okay, like I'm happy. Like it's so incredible to watch you. So, because as your coach, I remember it was a June day. Look, I'm like, I could write a song about it. <laughs> it was a day in We're June. a country song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was on the phone with you. And it was like one of our first sessions coaching. And so I want, if you're open to talk about this, but I was like, I think you need to coach lawyers. I tell this story all the time. You do? Mm-hmm. And I think you need to coach lawyers. And you're just like, no, not going to do it. And I'm like, but why? <laughs> why? You know, so take us back to why you were like, absolutely, no, not going to do it. I remember that exact moment. And the immediate thing that came up for me is like, I cannot coach lawyers. I am not qualified to be a lawyer because I am no longer a lawyer. Mm. What a crazy lie and statement. Like I say that out loud right now. I'm like, Aaron Gurner, you know better than that. But at the time, I mean, when I left law and decided to stay home with my girls, it was truly this unraveling of who is Aaron outside of being a lawyer. And when I came to you in that capacity, I still had not healed that version of myself to know that it was okay to chart a different path, that that wasn't what was working for me. It did not feel aligned. All of these things to be able to move past that shame and that guilt and that imposter syndrome to be able to step in to coaching lawyers, but I felt none of that. And in that moment, I was like, oh my God, I cannot, I am not qualified. Like that is scary. I can't do that. But I tell that story all the time because that was the first time you really calling me forward. And, and I knew that that was where I needed to go. Those were the women in my sphere of influence. I kept attracting them. It was like, you know, flies on honey. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So you eventually say yes. Yes. You're like, okay, I want to do this. And the idea came to you about doing retreats. Is that how it worked out? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're such a people person. And I always feel like people that are in a business, they need to utilize their gifts. So what would you say your gifts are? I am able to magnetize people in such a special way. I didn't really understand that gift for a really long time, but putting it into practice these last couple of years, I know that I have a unique way to magnetize people. And in addition to that, I'm able to see them and make them feel comfortable and loved and seen for exactly who they are, come as they are. Like that is my gift. People feel loved and seen in my presence and they want to be around me and I love people. So I'm so glad that that's my gift. (laughs) I know, right? Like, wow, God made me that way. So happy. (laughs) That's beautiful. So you decide to do your first retreat. How many people come? Eight. That's pretty good. Like that's mind blowing that you had eight people come to your first retreat. Most people have a silent retreat. Complete strangers. (laughs) Complete strangers. And how many have you had now? I had another one in the last, there were 10 women at the last one. And you have another one coming up? Yes. Okay. And you found really in this that this is all you want to do is retreats. It's amazing. And why is that? Like, what is it that you love about the retreats? I love about the retreats is the power of getting these incredibly talented, powerful attorneys out of their hectic law in life and putting them in an environment where they can, for a second, breathe, focus on themselves what they actually want, where they are going, like what they're feeling, anything. They haven't stopped long enough to do that. And so I'm allowing them to give them the space. And then I'm putting them in the room with other women who are in that exact same spot in their life. And that level of resonance, especially for a female attorney, because there is 
no place for us to go to be able to have those conversations and those relationships. It's very isolating, but the power of putting them in a room, the amount of growth and transformation that happens in such a short amount of time is something that it is really, I mean, I like to talk and I feel like I have a decent vocabulary, but it's hard for me to put into words, really. It's like the Holy Spirit is moving. These women's lives are forever changed and they are now this bonded community aside from me right like they have got separate relationships that they are helping each other grow and they've never had that ever before in their career yeah it feels so good yeah that you put that together because you were brave and you said yes I'm gonna even though I feel like an imposter right now I'm gonna do it anyway so courage pays off and the ripple effect that's happening right now I'm so proud of you I, I'm gonna say that about a million times on this podcast but I want to talk about how transformation happens because from what I understand, I'm not a lawyer, but even though I kind of still want to be, you know, I, get I it. kind of want to go to law school after watching Suits, but I get it. <laughs> they make it look really good. They make it look really good, Kayla. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey is not on site. Like, <laughs> Okay. So all these people, like they've had this dream for their whole lives usually to become a lawyer and you become a lawyer. And what is it actually like as an associate? <laughs> Oh, my. Well, <laughs> interestingly enough, there are two camps of people who go to law school that I have discovered. There are people who have wanted to be lawyers their entire life. Mm -hmm. That was not me. There is the other camp who went to law school because they did not know what else to do with themselves. And I know that that sounds wild. I see your face <laughs> right now. But there and I did. Not, I very like few and far between told that story before I actually started coaching lawyers. But what I have discovered is that it's 50 50. Oh, wow. You went because you wanted to go and save the world or you went because you needed three more years to figure it out. <laughs> True story. So regardless of what happens, you in law school, they teach you a lot about the law, but they do not teach you anything about the practice of law, not what it's going to be like when you get out in the real world, what it means to be an associate what it means to, if you want to go out on your own, run a business, there are no managerial classes, no business. I mean, it is literally just full on law. So then when you leave and you go and you're a first year associate, like for example, myself in big law, I go, I'm a first year associate. They're like, all right, here you go, figure it out. And so you have no mentor, you sitting in front of your computer, you are so overwhelmed. We're already perfectionists. We've already been told we can't make any mistakes. We've already been told it is perfection or die. You succeed. Like, this is what makes a good lawyer. This is what the this is the path. Everybody suffers. Let's go. I walk two miles in the snow. You too. Let's go. And so as a young associate, that is debilitating. It is it is debilitating. And the amount of anxiety and stress and burnout and physical like manifestations of that is very, very difficult that was just my personal experience. And I think a lot of people have that experience. The people that do not have that experience are people who find a mentor, you know, and mm -hmm. find a community that they're able to relate to that can be like, hey, you know, there's a different and better way. Unfortunately, that was not the experience that I had and why I'm so passionate about the community that I have now. And I think a lot of the lawyers in my generation, especially women who've been practicing 10, 15, 20 years have really had to fight and claw their way to build their life and career they want to because taking the traditional path, it's not compatible sometimes with life and certainly not motherhood. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about that story about when you had your first, was it your first child and you were still working? What happened when you were like trying to juggle it all? <laughs> this is so funny. I told this story yesterday for the first time in a really long time. So I had gone in-house with an oil and gas company and that's like the dream after you like leave big law and caveat, I had left big law, not on my own volition. This was during the 2008 and nine crisis. So like the pictures of people and lawyers like carrying all their stuff and boxes out like that was me. Wow. So went in house with an oil and gas company and I thought that I was going to have more flexibility because that's the lie we've been told. You go in house, you've got better hours, all this kind of stuff. Well, that was a lie. I could not work from home. I was told that I was going to be able to interview for a certain position within in the legal department. And then they found out that I was pregnant and then hired somebody else, a man, shocker. Um, and then really the culmination of that was after I had my daughter, she was almost two. I had to have back surgery. 
And I had been out of the office while we were closing a deal that I had basically been in charge of. But the manager that was above me had left and gone on to another job. Surprise, something ended up falling apart and he threw me under the bus. And so then I'm under the bus. The general counsel is just I mean, it was just this whole thing. And Kayla, I was like in that moment, I was like, no, I am not doing this. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. And I went and I talked to Nick. This is a one out of 10 recommend. I do not recommend doing this. I walked in that office the next day and I was like, I quit. Mm. I quit. And he was like, have you asked your husband about that? Oh. And I was like, I double quit. <laughs> like, I <laughs> double quit. <laughs> I really don't like you. <laughs> like, I really am pieced out on this job. So I do not, one out of 10 recommend just piecing out of your job. However, that was really the moment for me. I mean, I had just had enough. I was so tired. A nanny was raising my baby. I went home like six months before that. And Miriam wanted her, not me, to put her to bed. And I was like, I am not doing this. This is not... This is not the person that I want to be. I don't like this. I don't love this. My heart isn't here. And so I just walked away. Mm. Well, I think that I've been at that point, too, where I've just walked away. And you're like, wow, I could have done things a little smarter here. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) but that's because there were probably a lot of other opportunities before that where, you know, but you're just overwhelmed. You're oh, you're already trying to do everything to keep your head above water. And it's hard. So you live and you learn. And now you're teaching other people how to not get to that point. Correct. Right. And so it's it's crazy how that's what happens is you end up, you know, your pain, your mess ends up becoming this beautiful tapestry for a method that it's going to change other people's lives. Right. And that's what you're doing now. So you've started a new business, Powerhouse Lawyers. And I love the name of it. So cool. And like... This is a whole nother beast. Like talk about going to law school and like, you know, the trajectory. It's kind of a a safer route to take because, you know, like I'm going to have a job. I'm going to be able to do these things and this is going to happen. Now, when you become an entrepreneur and you're like, I'm going to start this thing, there is nothing guaranteed. Like it is all on you. So what has been your mindset? How have you been able to power through? Because I know it's not been easy, but you just keep showing up with a smile on your face and you're winning. So something you're doing is working. The biggest thing for me is just showing up imperfectly, like and just taking action. For so many years, I was like, what is everyone going to think? This has to be perfect. How am I going to look? What is this going to seem like? And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. No one else's opinions matter. And so for me to be able to just release feeling like I have to show up perfectly and just knowing that done is better than perfect and that no matter how I show up that day and how I feel maybe after I get off alive or after I do a story or after I do a podcast and I might be like, oh, like that didn't feel awesome. But I do it anyway, because I know that there's going to be something in that that someone needed to hear. And so that is really what keeps me going. And just God keeps showing up like when I am like, I do not know if I can do this anymore. Like you have got to give me a sign that I am going in the right direction. And just he just keeps showing up and telling me and showing me that I'm going in the right direction. But truly, it has been releasing the need to be perfect because that has crippled me for a really long time. Where do you think that originally stems from? Oh, 100 percent growing up. I mean, from the earliest I can remember when I got love, it was like when I made good grades, when I won my tennis match, when I was state champion, when I graduated in the top 10 percent, when I got to UNC Chapel Hill and no one else did, when I did the, you know, I literally like every accolade I have in my life is when people were like, you're so great. We love you. You're doing awesome. So if that's, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if that's all, you know, then showing up imperfectly does not feel good. No. And there's nobody there to be like, I'm so proud of you for posting today. You're so amazing. No, there's no, I don't have a cheerleading squad, Mm -hmm. right? Like I have to learn to be my own cheerleading squad and I am an excellent cheerleader for other people. You know that about me. Like I am the world's biggest cheerleader, but I have a hard time cheering myself. And so I have had to learn to cheer myself and celebrate the small wins. And I always start my calls off with my lawyers and ask them a win and it, It makes me laugh, but it tells me that that is the question that needs to be asked because a lot of times I met with radio silence (laughs) because we think that we need to hit a home run and other to qualify something as a win. So 
me learning how to do that and then teaching my clients how to do that has been like soul fulfilling because I can look back at all those little wins and look at what it added up to. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you celebrate a win in your life? Like small, like small wins. Small wins. I'll go out to dinner with my husband. I'll celebrate with my kids. My youngest daughter is so cute. She'll always write me little notes to celebrate. It's so cute. I'll just do something nice for myself. I'm having to learn. Like this has been the biggest lesson in 2023 for me is learning to celebrate wins. I am still not perfect. I am still struggling. And my husband is a constant reminder for me to do that. But I'm trying to do that and receive more because I know the more I receive, it opens me up to give more. Yes. And it it helps you create that momentum, too. Like when you're like, oh, I'm winning, 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 even if it's something like I just posted today. <laughs> and I'm a list checker offer. Like, I mean, I will like write something down on my list that I've already done just so I can check it off. <laughs> so like, you know, that's that feels the lawyer good. in you. Yeah, yeah. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah. OK, so we were talking about transformation. What do you think it is that will keep women in the law, right? Like what has to change for them? Like, yes, what you're doing at these retreats, but then they have to go back home and like integrate everything that they're learning. So what are some of those things that are helping protect them from overwhelm? They have to learn to manage making time for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's like the biggest thing that they are not doing. And they have been so busy trying to build that there's so many things that they can either outsource or delegate or get rid of. And they've been putting off the things that are actually going to grow and build their practice. And so being able to come and get clear on what those are and then the accountability mm -hmm. to keep doing it because we get they also get so busy and there's so many excuses to not show up for yourself and do the things that you actually need to do for you mm -hmm. so you can feel good every single day. I mean, for example, I had a client, she was so like bent out of shape about running this marathon. She's like, I haven't exercised in like three months. I've got to run and training for this marathon. And I said, do you want to train? Do you want to do the marathon? And she's like, well, I've already signed up for it. And I was like, that's not what I asked. Do you want to do the marathon, because I have a feeling the reason why you are not exercising and taking care of yourself and pouring into yourself is because you're avoiding wanting to run the marathon. Is there a penalty for not running the marathon other than loss of entry fee? No. She's like, well, I told someone else I would. I was like, well, then call her and tell her it is not the right time right now. Right? Like it's that kind and just showing them it. it's okay. It is okay to be in whatever season you are in. Sometimes things need to fall off in order for you to still be able to win in this hectic season. And just knowing that it's okay. You don't have to do all the things. Mm, oh my goodness. So good. And did so she end up calling off the marathon? Yes. She texted me the next day and she was like, I'm so excited because all she wanted to do was yoga. She was just in a in a level like she's she in a zen state right that was yeah. in a season where she didn't feel like she wanted to go and like power through freaking five mile run I mean I get that I, don't I never run to, want to dude ever I don't <laughs> want to run to the mailbox so like I get it like I don't ever want to do that but she just wanted to like zen and yoga and like really like deep you know so that kind of stuff it was just freeing for her to just put a mirror and say hey what do you want and ask for it and it's okay OK, so this is interesting because I think a lot of people do things because a former version of themselves wanted it. Right. I said I was going to do this. So now I have to do it. I told that person I would do it with them, you know, because they needed a friend, whatever the reasons why we say yes to things. How do we know that it actually is OK to say I'm backing out of this thing that I said I was going to do? Right. Because there is a time for that, just like in that season. And then how do we know that it's actually not self-sabotage? Right. Like, how do you know the difference between that? I always I have a very strong intuition. I think we all have a strong intuition if we're just willing to listen to it. Um, and to Holy get, Spirit. Yeah. And to get still enough to listen to it. And so that's really my answer to that question is. You really need to pray about this and and really think and be intentional about what your priorities and values are in this current season. And does that align with it? And is that serving the greater purpose? Is mm -hmm. that serving the priorities that you have right now in your life? And if it's not, then it's a no, because I would rather someone come to me in integrity and tell me right now is not the best time than to probably maybe not handle it in the best situation than to commit to me, pull out later or commit and not do a good job. 
Mm -hmm. right? You're not serving anybody by committing where you can't show up 100%. So I would rather someone come to me integrity and back out and say, I can't. But I really do think listening to your intuition and you know, you really know if you've sat with your priorities and your values in the season of life that you are in, you know, deep down if it's a yes or a no. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you were to meet God right now, what would you ask him? I would just ask him to continue to love me and guide me through this life and just know that he's with me all the time, just that I can still feel him every day and know that he's that he's with me and that his purpose for my life is so much bigger than I could even imagine. Mm, I love that. Okay, because this is special for me to hear you say that because I remember sending you seamless. Yes, and I actually was um, talking about this a lot lately that you really not only called me higher like as a version of myself and my business, but to my faith mm-hmm. um, that I had been kind of circling around the shame spiral for a lot of years, feeling like I wanted to have a relationship with Jesus. But then the intellectual part of me that didn't feel secure and like a baby Christian felt obviously insecure and then like an imposter and like what am I praying for? How do you pray? Or like all of these like crazy questions. And so I just really want to honor you and thank you for doing that and bringing that back into my life because it really in this season has been so pivotal and I'm just excited to continue to grow that relationship with him. That makes me so happy. And I want to talk about the spirituality because I think that trying to do business without God is... That's where people feel a lot of confusion all the time, you know, and if you're feeling confusion right now, it's probably because you're wrapped up in something you're not supposed to be wrapped up in. Right. So what would you say to that person that is feeling like how you felt like I'm not good enough? Like, who am I to even ask God for anything? Who am I to pray to him? Well, here's the thing. He doesn't he's not asking you to be perfect. He's just asking you to show up. So whatever that means, just start. That's all you got to do is just take a baby step. He's not asking you to like go found a church or, you know, like rescue or, you know what I mean? Like we try and make it this huge grandiose thing and this transformation and this thing. And it's just really one step at a time, like getting into the Bible and just learning and educating yourself. Like education to me is power. And the more you know and learn and just lean into that and just embrace being a beginner. It's okay to be a beginner. Jesus just wants you there in his love. Like he doesn't care if you're a beginner or if you were preaching sermons on Sunday. Mm, That is so good. And I feel like the more I get to know God too, like the more I read the Bible, I'm like, there's so many, there's so much more I don't know, you know? So I don't feel like the beginner thing ever goes away. And we probably won't really understand everything until we get to heaven one day. And I think that's what makes serving God such a honor. Because like, if he was just like us, if he thought just like us, I wouldn't want to follow him. Like, no, no, we need somebody who knows what's going on. You know, like he knows the ultimate deal. So we we're following him. Okay. So how have you kept like everything going well with your marriage during all of these different transitions you've been through in your life? It has been honestly such a season of growth for us in the most powerful way. We made a huge move as a family. We moved out of Dallas and moved about an hour east into the country closer to my husband's family and we're around cousins and just in a small town. And it's just been like this new season for us. And he is, he's a lawyer as well. And I did not know that your husband was a lawyer. Yeah. We met in law school. Oh my gosh. So he has been literally like the foundation to keep me going. Like when I do not believe in myself, he believes in me because he knows and fundamentally understands what I'm doing. Like he's been through this. Yeah. He's a dude, but like he's also been with, been through this and he has seen me, as 21 year old baby Aaron in law school and go through this whole thing. And he was like, this is where you are supposed to be. Keep going. You, you keep going. I mean, he just literally has been like the force to keep pushing me and always celebrating me. And I honestly, I don't think I could do, I know I couldn't do this without him. Mm. They say that like the most important decision you'll make in your life is who you're going to marry. hundred percent. I think so too. I think it's, I think it is the most important decision because it's such a hard thing when you are on completely two different spiritual paths. It's a hard thing when like you have a spouse that doesn't believe in what you're doing as an entrepreneur. So 
That's amazing. Did you know he was that type of man like when you first met him? Yes. Interestingly <laughs> enough, I did. I always knew that he was going to be that rock. Like, I feel like I'm, you know, up the hot air balloon. Like I saw you did this with Chase. I feel like this is a very similar yes. dynamic, but I'm like the hot air balloon going all this stuff like, woo, woo, woo. and he's, you know, the, the anchor, anchor mm -hmm. who's like, OK, like we, we got this. And he's <laughs> always been the steady. We dated for five years before we got married. So I was like, we got a pretty good idea what's going down <laughs> here. So, I mean, I'm like, let's let's do this, shall we? So I really did know foundationally who he was going to be. And I knew he was going to be an outstanding dad. His parents are divorced. And I think that 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 played a lot into him wanting to make sure that he had found the right woman and that he was 100 percent committed. I know that's what we dated for five years. I was like, I think we got this. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so um, but yeah. He's been foundational in that. I love that. What do you want your kids to remember you for? I want my kids to remember me for how I made people feel and how the people in my community show up, right? I want them to see these women as examples of Christ following wonderful women who they can look up to in every facet of their life, no matter what they want to do. But I think that ultimately starts with how I make people feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, truly, like people just want to be seen and heard. And that's all people really want at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So and I'm always because my daughter's in seventh grade. It's very hard. Like we're in that season. And I'm always like, you have to put yourself in other people's shoes. How would that make you feel right? Like, how would that make you feel if someone did that to you? It's just those lessons of always being kind. Mm -hmm. and making people feel loved and included. Mm, I love that. Okay, well, Erin, it has been so fun to have you back on the show, see how much growth you've had. And I know that people are going to absolutely love this episode just because you're just fun to listen to. You know, it's just like you can learn so much and smile at the same time. So where can everybody find you? So they can find me um, on Instagram, Erin Gerner, G-E-R-N-E-R. Also on LinkedIn, you can go also go to AaronGurner.com and find out all the info about my retreat, how to work with me, my community, all things Powerhouse Lawyers. Yay. Thank you. Kayla, thank you. I love you. I love you.